everyone. And we are officially live. It's Mike Wall back again with another episode of the Agent Revolution podcast where we deconstruct some of the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agent so they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. Man, I'm Jack. Today, we got a bonus episode with my man, Mr. Zach Folsom up in Kalamazoo, Michigan. We're getting uh, we're getting ninja ninja today, man. We're going crazy on some on some Facebook advertisements, some uh, some some really uh, I think uh, hacks for for generating leads for for those of you on a budget or just uh, just those of you who are, are really cheap. And uh, and I certainly know there's a lot of you guys out there. So um, Zach, man, welcome to the show, brother. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man, I can't wait. I've been looking forward to this one. I know. Uh, uh, you were on with Mr. Kitchens the other day, and and uh, I heard really, really good stuff about that. So I'm glad to get you back out and uh, present you to our audience. I know you're going to drop a lot of value today. Why don't you do this, man? Um, give us a quick bio on you and and uh, and help our audience get to know you. Sure. So um, I started off at Remax uh, when I was 19. So five years ago, I've been in the business for about five years. Started off at Remax. I was an independent agent for about two months, and then I got hired on a, on a team. Worked for that team for about a year. Then I got recruited to a different team. Worked for that team. I did, uh, I think it was like 62 straight Zillow leads to conversion buyers, uh, my second or third year in real estate. So that was my third, second or third year. Then I helped manage that team for a while. We made an independent brokerage. And I was involved with a lot of the decisions with the independent brokerage. Yeah. And then I just switched over to EXP once that kind of dissipated. So, okay. yep. Nice, um, man. So, yeah, I've been, been doing that for a while. I know the most money we were ever spending on Zillow at one point in time was $15,000. I went out on my own and I was like, man, I do not want to spend $15,000 to, yeah. to get marketing for buyers. So yeah. I delved into the Facebook, Google, all that type of retargeting stuff to figure out how to make it work and figured it out. I've had some help from some some other people that know a little bit more about it, but I really catered it to real estate and the the leads that I was looking to get. Yeah. So um, that's crazy, man. And by the way, we at one time were spending about $16,000 a month on Zillow. Mm -hmm. And I do not recommend building a business that way, um, especially if you are in a market where your average sale price is lower than like 175. It can become really challenging if you run a team and you are paying splits to um, not only to Zillow, right? Because there's the lead acquisition cost, but then there's you know, then there's the split to the agent and whatever's left over. And it can become very challenging to run a business that way, um, as we found out the hard way. But I, I like what you did, man. You said you essentially said, you know what? <clears throat> I like what Zillow's doing. They provide a good lead, but I think I can I can do a little bit better. And uh, and so that got you interested. Right. That was the that was kind of the driving force to help you um to give you the ammunition you need to start digging a little bit deeper to see if you could reproduce those leads at a better cost. And, um, and you figured it out. Right. And so yeah. that's what you're here to share with our audience today. Cause you're, you're a guy that comes from a place of abundance and uh, helping others grow. So um, I'll let you kind of start off wherever you want, man. Uh, Cause I know this is, this is, this is about you and, and giving some good actionable tips to help, uh, those watching um, help implement mm -hmm. this into their business so that they can start selling more homes right away. Sweet. Uh, just so you know, Mike, if there's anything that doesn't make a hundred percent sense when I say it, yeah, it's kind of high level things. Just sure. ask me to explain it more. Yeah, uh, I think I've become pretty familiar with it, so I kind of skip over what people would know and wouldn't know. Yeah. So um, I don't want to repeat too much of what I did on the, the kitchen show. Okay. Um, so what I'll, what I'll go into first is the most important tool in your arsenal in real estate right now is going to be a Facebook pixel or Google AdWords retargeter. Yeah. Those, those are what's going to let you, I mean, there's so much that you can do with those. You can see how long somebody has been on your page for how long somebody or like what they've clicked on, on your page. You can see how many pictures they went through. If you have that set up. You can basically, it's almost like you have the information of the buyer without having the actual information of the buyer. Yeah. So you can go through and kind of figure out who exactly of the audience group that you're working with is going to be the most likely to purchase a home from you or most likely to purchase the home that you're trying to market 
in the quickest time frame possible mm-hmm. based on their interactions online. Yeah. Um, and what really makes, I think, the way that I'm running the Facebook ads right now helpful is that it's not like Zillow, but people expect it to be like Zillow. Okay. Mm-hmm. So um, I have a, a slideshow that you can download for free at zachfolsom.com slash marketing if you're interested in getting it's a 23 page slide on how my ads are set up. It's got the copy, it's got everything in it. So if you want to yeah. go there and download it, um, I can put it in the description too. But the the first step is you have to understand the currency that you're trading with the buyer. So what are buyers looking for online when they're shopping for homes? Pictures. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, pictures. All buyers care about when they're looking for homes is pictures. Um, if you walk somebody through a house or if you've even had a listing up on Facebook before, nine times out of 10, what you're going to get is, do you have any more pictures? If you only have a couple pictures up, they're always asking for more pictures. Yeah. So what makes my ads really powerful is I'm going to put two to three of the best pictures up, never the front of the house. Um, I've done so much testing on this. If you're putting the front of a house up on Facebook, your your conversion rate and your click through rate is almost double. So you're spending four to five dollars as opposed to two dollars because you're putting up the picture of the front of the house. Why do you think that is, dude? That's weird. <laughs> um, so I think it's because, and I I know this is gonna sound really really kind of strange, but I think people just skip over the front of the house unless they're in front of it because they they care more about where they're going to be spending like ninety percent of their time, which is inside. Uh, which is inside, yeah. and I. I don't think the outside like curb appeal is really important when you're listing the home, but for online advertising, I I remember one ad that I ran. Um, I got a dollar twenty, or it was a dollar thirty five per lead acquisition uh, for the kitchen, and the kitchen looked disgusting. Um, <laughs> like, it's it's in the slide. It's not a good kitchen. It's got metal cabinets. Not sure if you've ever shown a house with metal cabinets before. But oh they yeah, look, yeah. They look so bad. It. Yeah. Um, and then I had a picture of the front of the house and the front of the house, I think was like $3 and 42 cents. Um, so yeah, it was, it was almost double just because it was the picture of the front of the house. Dude, so that's crazy. So that's golden tip number one right now. Right. And I know, I, I know like there's probably 90% of the people that are going to listen and watch the show. They're putting the front part, they're, they're putting the, fr- the, the, the front part of the house online. Like that's what we, that's what we do, man. Right. And that's, I mean, it just doesn't work the same way that it used to. I, I think people are just clicking on it because that's what really captures their attention. Yeah. Like who, when you're interviewing a client, you've got to think about it as the, the ad sense of you're starting from point A, you want to get to point B, which is getting their information. When you're talking to any client that you're interviewing, who in their front goals is saying, I'm looking for a house that looks really great on the outside. Like if you're doing your buyer presentation, everything, yeah. it's I've a good never, word, yeah. Yeah, never had anybody do it. So that would be probably, like you said, golden rule number one. Golden rule number two, um, you have – my copy is always something along the lines of why it's a good deal. So you've got to put it in the mind of the buyer that what you're presenting to them is a good deal. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was my, – my best performing ad where I got $1.56 per lead acquisition after spending $0.20 cents per click – um, so that's a dollar seventy total. I got twenty six leads from it for a dollar fifty six a piece. Holy cow, dude! Yeah. <laughs> so um, that one, it was um, take a look at this thirty k under projected value. That was the copy, and it's it's in the slides that I mentioned earlier. And what it, I think, why it works so well is it was a picture of a kitchen, and it was it was just saying, look. I know this is a good deal. I know the kitchen doesn't look the best, but we're listing this intentionally $30,000 less than it would be if it were fixed up. So a lot of people, a lot of people clicked on that. Yeah. One. So it's the, it's the, it's back to that whole, like, you know, put like, remember in the old, like, I mean, five, six years ago when foreclosures were a big thing, you know, it, it's making, it's giving the perception of, of, of the buyers buying into value, like immediately. Mm-hmm. Right. Or they're reaching a goal would be the other thing. So yeah. buying into value, reaching a goal. So like um, you'll love this move and ready, no work home. There's a ton of buyers out there that are looking for a move and ready, no work home. Something along those lines where, yeah. or 
stainless steel is another one. I get a ton of clicks on stainless steel appliances. If you have stainless steel appliances in your listing, take a picture of the kitchen showcasing stainless steel, say stainless steel appliances included with this lovely home. Yeah. Um, school districts, if it's a really good school district, um, highlight that. So you could do like, that's one that I would do the front of the house for. Yeah. Because my my data on that is pulling like if the front of the house and the school district match up for some reason, people click on it and it's cheaper. Okay. I mean, it's, it's a whole bunch of data recognition, which is what makes the ad successful is going through like several months of putting a whole bunch of different ads up doing split tests, which is changing one thing about the ad to see yeah. what's performing better and then figuring out what's working the best. Dude, that's awesome, man. So you're saying it's okay, like if you're running school district in your ad copy, then the front mm -hmm. of the house is okay. That's been my experience with okay. it. Okay. Um, right. Yep. Uh, next thing, you want to make sure the link that you're sending them to, I laugh every time I see a sponsored ad that sends them to the MLS link. Um, there's there's six or seven agents that keep getting, giving me sponsored ads in my marketplace and it's getting linked to uh, Flex Flex MLS is what we use. Oh, wow. So it gets linked to there. And I'm like, wow. So you're paying for clicks for people that you don't even know if they're interested in it. And you can't, you can't, you can't, capture, it. You can't capture any information from the MLS, can you? No, no, you can't. Um, I haven't seen any way to put a pixel up on your MLS links that you share. If I yeah. do, I'll, I'll definitely share <clears throat> it. But um, KV Core... Uh, for EXP agents does have uh, integrations with pixels and AdWords retargeting that you can put in there. Okay. It, it you can't do everything with it, but you can you can at least track and see who viewed your page. Yeah. Which is the important thing. Okay. So once you once you blast it out there, um, so I always do. There's there's different lead fill outs that you can do. One's called like lowest cost. One's cost per action and another one's like cost per click something like that i can't remember the exact names of them right now yeah but lowest cost what you're doing is you're basically telling facebook get this in front of as many people as possible as quickly as possible and try to keep the price low yeah. so never never do that one never uh, do that one never that's the default option why is it the default option because that's what they make, want you to do right you'll make more they'll make more money right because they spend your money quicker. I yeah. always do um, a cost bid cap. So basically what I'm doing is I'm saying, uh, Facebook, you've got this group of people and you're planning to show them an ad. I would love to love to get them to, for the amount of times that you show my ad, each time that somebody clicks it, I'm willing to pay you X dollars, which is usually like 20 cents. Yeah. And I've run it where it's super high with my ads it always averages out to 20 cents. 20 cents, okay. So 20 cents a click should be should be your goal. Now, obviously that depends on your market. It depends on how many other people are using Facebook. Um, I wouldn't pay more than 50 cents a click okay. based off of what I've been doing. So when you, and it allows you to set your budget, right? So would, are you saying when you set your budget, you would never set it any higher than 50 cents a click? So when you set your budget, you, you set two things. You set the either the daily total that you want to spend or right. the campaign total. Okay. So set the campaign total to what you want to spend to blast it out there. I'd recommend okay. like 50 bucks. Okay. Um, then after that, you get to decide the, the default option is going to be lowest cost. You have to go, there's a little blue thing right underneath it that says looking for a different method because it'll always select lowest cost yeah. first. So you click that little blue thing underneath it and then it comes up as cost per like average bid cap. Yeah. So what that's doing is it's saying, um, I allow you to spend, it's like 10% or something more than my bid cap to win a bid if you think I'll win it. But I don't want my overall progress of the bid cap to be any more than 20 cents. Okay. Yeah. Is that, does that register? Do you think yeah. that makes enough sense? That makes sense. Yep. Cool. So then you have them go through, you want them to click on the link. Um, I know some people want to try and capture their information the first time that they click on the link. Mm -hmm. I personally don't do that. You can if you want to. I, I think it detracts people from your brand. So mm -hmm. I always put like my website on ads or something else like that. Um, so that way they know that I'm the real estate agent that has it listed. Yeah. It's um, interesting that you do that because I, I think that, you know, 
there, I guess there's two different schools of thought there, right? There's like, if you, if you're, if you're working with like a commissions Inc or a Boontown or a, a KB core, uh, typically there, there are those forced registrations, right? They'll show you maybe one or two pictures. Then you get a box that pops up, but then you look at like somebody like Zillow, right? Who actually allows the site to nurture the client and then the client to reach out to the agent and, 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 um, or, or to the platform yeah. and they volunteer their information, right? They want somebody to call them. Right. And that's, that's my line of thought. My KV core, just so everybody knows is set up. They can look at, I think it's 10 properties before they're forced to sign up. Okay. Um, I don't personally use KV core. I have my own website that I run with my own, uh, domain and everything. So that yeah. way I can set up the listing to be exactly the way that I want it. Okay. Um, so on mine, I actually track, there's a picture at the top that says for sale. Then underneath that, there's a button that says, um, call to set up a showing and it's a trackable button. If somebody clicks on it, but I don't get a call, yeah. um, I know that they clicked on the button to maybe call me and then I can hit them with an ad on Google or, or on Facebook or on YouTube. That's like, Hey, notice that you might've tried to call me, but it mm-hmm. didn't come through. If you want to call me again, you can reach out like this. Mm-hmm. Um, then it goes through like all the listing stuff. And then the last one is email. And then I show the pictures after that. And it's just a slideshow of pictures. They can click through it. And then sometimes I'll have a video. Sometimes I won't have a video. There's always a contact form at the bottom, but I never yeah. require a sign up on that because I want them to familiarize themselves with the house. I want them to, to feel the house. Then what I do is I come back with a Facebook lead form. So I, I took the concept of Zillow where you're familiar with something and you've looked through it several times. And then I put it back on Facebook as a lead form. Okay. Um, so with Facebook, for everybody watching, you can actually set up a lead form in Facebook, put the categories that you want done on Facebook, um, first name, last name, email, phone. You can then upload that CSV file into KV Core um, once you download it from Facebook. So mm-hmm. like all the leads and everything. Um, but you can have them fill out their information on Facebook. It looks like a Facebook, like it, it kind of looks like Facebook sponsoring the listing yeah. in my opinion. Um, you can also have, I do a separate page for that. So I manage a page mm-hmm. on Facebook called first look home Southwest Michigan. Yeah. So that's where they're filling out the lead form too. It's my privacy policy. It's still my website. It's still my everything. I just have a separate page that I manage. Yeah. So that way it looks like a third party source. So let me let me help everybody understand that the what what Zach is doing the, the the important components here are that you are connecting your Facebook ad with some sort of IDX feed, um, it which enables the um, the buyer or the potential prospect to to get to the photos, which is essentially what you want to show them, and then there's some sort of a there's some sort of a capture function. Um, you've got it set up to let the buyer look at 10 properties. I think you can set them up, uh, either way, but that, that capture function, uh, is important if you want to get the information while the prospect is on the site, but it's not necessary with the pixel, is it? No, no. In fact, that's why on my personal website, they're never required to fill out information on my personal one. My KB course. You got it anyway. Right? Yeah, I, I have more information than I think they'd ever think that I would have. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's it's easier to keep them, and I'll go into this later, but it's you can put people into baskets then based on what they're looking on on your site and what pages they've gone to. Okay. So um, then once you have the form set up, the way that it works, I usually do like five pictures of the house, and it's something along the lines of, want information or to set up a showing on this home question mark. And then it's, it's like the picture of the kitchen, the picture of this, the picture of that. And mm-hmm. each one is sign up now, sign up now, sign up now. Cause they, they won't remember the link and I don't have it all over Zillow at this point in time. Okay. This is, I usually wait seven to 10 days to put a home up on Zillow because okay. I don't want the buyer information to be sold by Zillow, by realtor.com, by Trulia. Okay. Um, if you put it up, immediately with your listing. And it's really, you have to explain this to clients because they're like, I don't see my home on Zillow. I don't see my home. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say, look, I understand why you think that it needs to be up there. The people that are most interested in your home that would put an offer in within the first seven days are either working with an agent or they're going to find it by my ad. Trust me. And that's, that's always what happens. Okay. So 
then you you give them that because they're not going to remember the link. They're not going to go into their search history and go back the 300 web pages that it was to figure out what the home was that they looked at. So then they'll fill out their information on Facebook. And that's where I've been gathering the lead. The lead cost for $1.50 is off of Facebook. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, um, so obviously you've done a lot of trial and error testing here. Um, yeah. You figured out what essentially are, are the most, are the best performing ads. So, and, and you've, and then by doing that, you've been able to, um, you've been able to lower your lead acquisition costs substantially. Mm -hmm. And, and so um, are you, when you say that you're doing this with like new listings, are you, are you, it, 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 what what can somebody do? And, and obviously this is going to be different, I think, for uh, different markets, because I know like in our market, for instance, they you if you're going to advertise somebody else's listing, you kinda, I think you got to get their permission to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm not I'm not sure that that's actually true in in uh, in other marketplaces. But let's say it is true mm -hmm. in every marketplace and you do get the permission of the other agent. What do you recommend in that case? Let's say it's not your own listing, but it is a it is like a hot listing, and you, and it is mm -hmm. something you would want to advertise. Is it? Do you work that or play that the same way? I I personally haven't had to do it yet. I've been pretty blessed with getting quite a few listings the past past couple months, so mm -hmm. I have been doing it solely on my own listings because I'd rather spend my advertising dollars. It gets the listing sold quicker too. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if you saw the post from Kitchens, but I've had five listings sell directly from Facebook marketing. The buyer agent or the buyer themselves brought it up that they found the home on Facebook um, from advertising. Yeah. And then I've had two two double dips and one extra sale off of Facebook advertising. Man, that's crazy. Yeah. And so my most recent one, the home was on the market for 30 days, just to give everybody some backstory. On the market for 30 days, I had 10 showings. Every showing said the home should sell for 70000 pretty much. Mm -hmm. I, I kept it up. I kept running the Facebook ads. Um, last Friday, actually, I got a call directly from my website from a, a buyer. He goes, hey, I've been seeing this listing on Facebook for a while. My grandma's been seeing this listing on Facebook for a while. Um, I've been out of the market for two months, but I was just curious if you could show it to me. Yeah. I walked him through it and he wrote an offer on it. And that's that's where the 3000 ROI came from. Yeah. I spent $40 to boost it the first time. Um $30 to retarget everybody. It's like 3104 is what Facebook's minimum is. Yeah. And then like 20 bucks to get lead forms. So, I was paying like I paid 100 bucks total for advertising and I'm getting a $3500 commission. Wow, dude, that's insane, man. So like so I'm curious like for you um are you like, are you boosting this from your business page, from your personal page or like who's your audience for that too? Are you creating a custom audience? So yes, I, I talked about this. I would never boost a post. Um, boosting posts that perform well on your Facebook page. If you've read uh, Jab, Jab, Right Hook by Gary Vee, yeah. um, king of social media, by the way, if you're curious about how to advertise better, I'd watch some Gary Vee. Um, you don't, you have different audiences. Your Facebook page, when it performs well, I give them all the information in my Facebook page because they're already fans, they're already clients, mm -hmm. their friends are already clients, and they're going to see that the friends have showed them that. Yeah, I go to the business ads manager, which I, it probably would take a little bit of time for people to figure out. Mm -hmm. So it's from business ads manager. I create an ad. The, the custom audience is really, it's pretty basic. You have to do 15 miles around your, your home. Yeah. You can't go any lower than that. Um, the retargeting custom audience is people that have visited your page. Okay. That's that's the retargeting part of it. But the the actual first ad is like a general blast. You know what I mean? So yeah. you're you're really just trying to get it out as as far and as wide as possible to get the ten or the five percent of people that are gonna click on your ad. Kelly, we are recording this, by the way, and I'll I'll send out the uh, the link for the recording when we're done. But yes, Kelly, we are. Cool. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, does that answer your question on that? It, it does, and and I I think that I mean obviously you there's 
it, you can go so much deeper when you talk about you know using custom audience or lookalike audiences and so forth. But mm -hmm. I'm not. We we want to keep it as layman as possible. And then I think what we can do um, is we'll use this kind of as a springboard um, and and allow people. What we'll, what what we'll do is we'll give you Zach's contact information at the end here, and you can reach out to Zach if you have questions about. Um, about any of this. And he also has the white paper that he's put together. Uh, but what we're trying to do is just really get, give you kind of a high view, uh, a high level view so that you can recreate some of this on your own and not have to spend a ton of money. Um, and I, I know that like w when you look at sites like uh, Commissions Inc or Boomtown or even KB Core for that matter, um, you, usually your lead acquisition cost for buyers is going to be somewhere between two fifty and probably five dollars a lead for buyer leads, and then upwards of seven to ten dollars a piece for seller leads. Um, so we've talked a little bit about um, um, creating buyer leads. And by the way, here's one question I do have because I've, I've heard before we move to seller leads, I've heard kind of a mixed bag about like having ads that that have a link that takes your potential prospect off of Facebook. Have you found that that's a problem? No. I mean, I have a pretty average bounce rate, um, which is the amount of people that click on an ad off of Facebook and then immediately exit the page before it loads. Yeah. Um, it's like 80% bounce rate, which is super common nowadays. Um, but no, my average, my average user time on my web page is a minute and 31 seconds. And I timed yeah. that. And I got through all the pictures, read the entire description, et cetera, et cetera, in 30 seconds. So they're spending three times longer than what I took to go through my own information on the page. Okay. Let me ask you this, Zach. Um, yeah. Do you think that they are since so if you're providing a link to your IDX Fed website, um, do you think? Is there a way to set it up so that you could actually create the ad with the lead form? Um, that kept them on Facebook and would it, it, and, and if there's any advantage to that, it would be that Facebook loves to keep prospects or people on on their site versus um, steering them into another site and off Facebook. Is there is there any validity to any of that? So yes, um, I do exactly what you said. Okay. So I give them the the link first. That's the free information part, right? Right. Then I let Facebook handle the lead. So I don't have them sign up on my website. They sign up on Facebook. With um, the lead form, right? With the lead form, yes. Okay. And I, I think that works really well because Facebook's money hungry. They're getting the leads that are probably spending the most time or the people that, are, that will submit their information the best. Yeah. But they're, I mean, I worked a lot of Zillow leads. These are, these are old school Zillow leads, like from uh, 20, 2017, 20 probably early 2018 yeah. when you just got the email, the phone number and the name yeah. um, that's like, I'm interested in this property. And that's what you got from Zillow. That's very comparable. I've been finding that I get like a, it's usually like a 10% answer rate. So I'll talk to somebody one time out of 10, which was what I was averaging back when I was doing Zillow. Yeah. And then they're usually in the market, looking to be in the market or going to get pre-approved soon. So it's it's been pretty lucrative doing it that way. Yeah. And I think what you're saying is is right. If somebody's going to sign up for something, I wouldn't take them away from the Facebook page. Okay. I think people as much as they say they don't trust Facebook, I think they trust Facebook. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and the only reason I ask that is because I think people have the tendency to grab a link from their um you know, from their IDX Fed website and post that link to Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I think more and more that um, it's not that it doesn't work, but I think that Facebook, you know, I, I mean, they want to keep people on their site. Let's let's just be honest. And mm -hmm. and so if you're using a line or a, a, a URL from from a third party site um, and you're forcing the prospect to then click on that link, then they are being taken away from Facebook. So the likelihood that your ad might show as much or to as quality of prospects might be lower. I can't, I can't say that for sure, but I just, I, 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 I I'm hearing more and more that Facebook wants to, to keep the prospects on their site. Yeah. And they do have like uh, instant experiences are coming out for mobile. If you haven't looked into those yet, I'd strongly suggest looking into those. That's what I ran for 
um, a seller. It's a remembrance campaign, more or less. So yeah. I got some geo leads, instant experience on the geo leads. So it would, you'd click on it if you wanted more information. It'd be straight in Facebook. Then there's like a paragraph for each thing, and then a link to go to the website if they wanted to. But it yeah. gave them free information, and I got. Um, out of the 350 people that it showed like 10 to 15 times, 60 of them, according to Facebook's algorithms, would remember my ad. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. As far as marketing goes, I spent 60 bucks on that. Yeah. So I'm paying a dollar for a person that is recognized as a seller to remember my ad. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you, so we, we, we talked a little bit um, or a lot. Um, I guess about buyer lead generation. Are you doing anything for sellers at all right now? Or are you just doing buyers? I am doing sellers. Um, it's so this is like opening a can of worms because it's so different than buyers. Um, I'm doing content driven marketing for sellers. Okay. So, so it used to be the whole homey mouth thing that everybody played out, right? Oh, no, gosh. Really that anymore. no, but well, it doesn't work. Every, yeah. every seller's like, why would I sign up for a homey Val? Get, bothered by an agent for 18 months and then only go to Zillow to find the same information. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's too widespread. So with the sellers I've made, I think it's like 15 different blog posts. Now this is, this is really high level marketing stuff. And if you don't understand digital marketing, it's, it's probably going to be hard to follow, but I have 15 different blog posts that I wrote that are intertwined between each blog post so that way I can track and see what people are most interested in by sharing a main mm -hmm. blog post. And then depending on what they click on, I know what they're most interested in so I can hit them with a, a specifically targeted ad for what they're most interested in. So mm -hmm. quick example, like I have one that's like the top five people that are looking and moving. And one of them is like you have a ton of equity in the home. So if somebody is going through and they're scrolling and they're like, oh, yeah, I have a ton of equity in my home. They click on that. Then they go yeah. to equity. Then I hit them with like, uh, hey, you know, if you have a lot of equity right now, we're actually seeing higher returns on people with higher equity, getting low mortgage rates on their next buy. If you're looking to size up, now's the time. Yeah. Or like you're looking to size down, now's the time. And there's there's a lot more intricacies with that that – um it's, it's really hard to just explain. Yeah. So ba basically what you're doing is you're creating, it's like a drip. Se it's like an email drip sequence and set, except it's a content drip sequence and you're leading the seller down your, that content path and essentially nurturing the lead until they're ready to fill out some sort of a form and contact you. Correct. Correct. But I'm also, you get 180 days on Google and Facebook um, to keep track of IP addresses. Okay. So whenever I want to send out a blast, I can do it for up to 180 days of people that click to visit each page. Okay. So yeah, it's, I don't know if I'd really call it a nurture system. It's, it's more of like a click funnel system. I know that that's a, a brand name click funnels, yeah, yeah. but that's what it is, is you're trying to get them to go from page to page to page to eventually sign up for something. And I have my own personal ads throughout the page too. So like click here to get a market evaluation, click here to get like a live call, click here to get a this, click here to get to that. Got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. And and so like I mean in, in the, people are seeing a shift in in some of in some of their markets right now and um we're really still here in Ohio or at least our part of Southwest Ohio um still a sellers market and I think that um I think that you know he who has the listings um, is is the one that's going to ultimately win in our marketplace right now. But I do think there'll be some sort of a balance shift. And, you know, certainly with buyers, I mean, for if you can go into a listing appointment and you can show um, that seller what you're doing and show them in layman's to make it make sense and then give them the social proof, right, about, you know, about the experiences you've already created for your other sellers. Dude, that is some powerful freaking ammo. You know what well, I mean? And not only that, but like you're getting both sides of the commission too, man. Oh, dude, it's it's wild. So the the last listing appointment I went on, um, I'm actually coming up with a page for people that's the top 10 questions you should ask your, your future listing agent. I'm going to blast that out there. The first one is, how are you going to get my listings to people not including sites like Zillow? 
because I am throwing all the agents under the bus that are just mm-hmm. using Zillow yeah. to advertise listings because I, in my explanation of it, I'm like, it's the lazy man's way of doing things because if they're just paying or they're just putting it up on Zillow, they're waiting for some <laughs> other agent to call the buyer and bring them through. Right. All they're doing is paying to take pictures. Right. So yeah, you're, you're super right on that. And it always makes sellers happy when you're like, yeah, I got your listing in front of 3000 people today. Yeah. And that's what I average for like 35 bucks. So you can spend 35 bucks, get in front of 3000 to 4,000 buyers in a 15 mile radius around their house. Okay. Okay. Any more gold nuggets you want to drop on us? Um, probably I would say the biggest one is give more stuff away for free. Okay. Don't, the more that you keep hounding somebody to click on something and to enter information, the less you're going to know about them. Um, right. You've, you've got to think of the web as a way to, cause you can't do this anymore. Facebook originally had categories. Yeah. You could target people based on their income level. They're this, they're that, they're this. You can't do that anymore um, because it's against HDIC. They're never going to go back. You can't do it anymore. What you can do is write ad copy to target those people. If your ad says something along the lines of like, um, are you curious about why higher end homes are selling slower than low end homes? The people that are most likely to click on that are not going to be people that live in a hundred thousand dollar house. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's the big, the big thought behind it is just, you need to either know why you're advertising or don't do it yourself is what I would say. You got to know exactly why you're doing what you're doing, how it's going to affect it. And you've got to have like 18 steps written. It's like a chess match. You got to be 10 steps ahead of the buyer. Yeah. I love it, man. I love it. And so, and and by the way, that, that is that we've been going in that direction for, for a few years now where, I mean, people, people still don't get it. Like um, you try and give as much away for free as possible. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like most of the things you see in like click funnels and stuff, um, is already out on the stuff there that people are paying like $3,000 a course for the videos are, have already been put out onto YouTube and they, they just haven't been, they just haven't been compiled into one class together. And, and they, so they've just been, they've essentially been put in when they sell them to us for twenty nine ninety seven or whatever, essentially they're putting them in a, in a, in a package, calling it a course and then, and then selling it to us for, you know, thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. But, but the reality of it is most of this information is available for free. It's just a matter of, you know, putting it all together. But I, I, I love that, man. Listen, so like what I, what I, what I'm thinking about in my mind is that, and I don't know if this is true in your market. I can only guess that it probably is because, there's a disconnect in our industry um, with um, between agents and, and brokerages. And, and I don't mean that, you know, EXP is the answer to everything, but I know that there are a lot of brokerages here locally um, that are not, they, they are not fulfilling their end of the bargain. And what I mean by that is 50% of the agents in our marketplace um, haven't made any money at all this year, 50%. And, 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 and so what I'm seeing there is that there's, the people that are getting into the industry, they're not getting what they need in order to have the success that they want. And, and that falls on the brokerage because, you know, I know when these people sit down to interview, it's these, these people are telling them, Hey, listen, we got training, right? We got all these tools, systems, and resources. So I, if you can see where I'm going with this, like I, I'm challenging you, like, so now you, you got buyers and sellers, right? But like, are you thinking about doing this for agents, right? Are you thinking about like what kind of oh. content, what kind of material can you get in front of agents? Yeah. Um, are you are you talking about for me to recruit for EXP? Yeah. Oh yeah. For yeah. your team or for whatever you're trying to do, man. One hundred percent. So I mean, the my game plan right now is I'm probably going to open up some some KV core spots for people that are interested in me running their ads for them, so that way they don't need to worry about it. Yeah. It'll be super super inexpensive for me to run it because I have the platform already set up. Like you just need to send me pictures, super inexpensive. I'm going to, my goal is to have like 20 different campaigns set up for where I want people to click. Like I want to get doctors um, clicking. I want to get like lawyers clicking. 
I want to gather as much data information on the buyers and sellers in my marketplace as possible. Yeah. So that way I know when's the best time to target them. Um, and I want to be able to, like, for agents especially, um, I think just reaching out and letting them know that once they join, if they're, my goal was to give everybody like 50% off any information that I'd ever give off if they're with eXp because I love eXp. Yeah. And it's easier to integrate everything with KV Core. But that would be that would be kind of the thought right now. I know as far as as far as lead acquisition with agents go, that that's probably like six to seven months out before yeah. I'd have a drip campaign, or I guess the way that you called it, like a drip campaign online for yeah. click-throughs. So well, I've already started on some of it, man. So I like I if you ever want to get together and, and mastermind about that, I would love to do that with you, man. And, and oh yeah, we could uh, help put something together. Um, Listen, man, what, one thing I'm really passionate about right now in like, like I'm really passionate about there. I mean, there are really, there are four, four kinds of people in our industry. There, there are people that, that they get in this, the, get into the industry and, and, and they just think that when they show up, right, people call them, they get licensed, they show up, people call them, they show up at a big fancy house. And then that person wants to write a contract on that house and, uh, and then you show up at a closing table and you get paid, right? Because that's the way it looks like on TV. That's what mm -hmm. it looks like on TV, right? So, yeah. and, and there's nothing more to it than that. And, and then there are people out there that see it like it really is. So there's people that get into the industry. They don't know what they don't know. And they're not looking to find out anything else. And then there are people that get into the industry. They don't know, but they're seeking to know more. And then there are the people that are really bad that they know what to do and they just don't do it. <laughs> And, and then there are people that know what to do and they're absolutely taking action on it. And, and the, so the group that I'm trying to get in front of are, is the people that are seeking, the people that don't know, they don't have the information. So like me being on online with you today on this podcast, it's like me trying to get value in front of those people, the people that don't know, but they're seeking. And I know that's why you're here as well is because we're trying to deliver that information for free. We're not mm -hmm. charging anything for it. We're trying to get that to the inf this information to the people that are seeking because we understand there's a huge disconnect. Fifty percent of the agents in our marketplace haven't gotten paid. And yeah. like, listen, you can't you can't live. You know, it, these people are not even at the poverty line. They haven't gotten any money at all. I mean, like, I don't even know right. how they're they're still licensed. But Uber it, man, yeah. And 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 the board doesn't want to fix that because mm -hmm. they're getting they're getting uh they're getting all the all the, all the um. The the uh, the, pay, the fees from their board dues and, and all that other stuff, and so like I, I'm taking it upon myself, man, to really start trying to get in front of some of these people. And I don't care if you're locally here in my market. Just like you said, man, you can. It doesn't matter where you're at, right? You can help people in California uh, oh, run, yeah. run ads to uh, to uh, to a potential audience in California to help them find. All you need is pictures, right? That's all you need. That's all. Yeah, picture. I mean, I don't even need ad copy. You don't even need to come up with that. Just shoot me the pictures of the house that you want leads on. And it it's that easy. Yep. So yeah. like, I, I, and I, like people like you, man, I, I so love, I, I, because like you, you have the right mentality, man. It's like, it's like, give it away. Like it's a, it's an abundance mentality. And so this, this whole show is like predicated on getting people like you on that have really valuable information to share and then getting it in front of those right people. So Man, I commend you for that. I'm so glad that um, that you that you came on, and I definitely want to continue this conversation, um, maybe even at a higher level, and talk more about you know what we can do to get more information in front of those agents who are who are who are seekers. They don't know, but they're seekers, and yeah. uh, in, a, in creating some sort of a resource for them uh, long term to to go uh, to get everything they need in order to have the success they want out of real estate, not just sit by idly while their broker pads his pockets, right? By right. charging high commission splits and not delivering any value, yeah, not interested in that, right? No, I if I could make a hundred people millionaires, I'd consider that a win. Like yeah. that, that's cool to me. It's way better to have success with other people than it would be just to to keep all this information to myself, only use it for myself, and try to like make as much money as possible. I can't go across the United States. You can't go across the United States. We should just have more people that are better suited to be better agents. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep. So one more time, brother. Um, 
uh, give the address for your white paper and then how can people connect with you? Because I know people are going to have a ton of questions for you. I'm sure. So um, white paper, ZachFolsom.com slash marketing, Z-A-C, like Zach Efron, but the last name is Folsom, F-O-L-S-O-M, dot uh, com slash marketing. You can send emails directly to marketing at ZachFolsom.com or you can shoot me a text. Give me a call at 269-370-1085. Brother, thank you so much, man. Um, I could geek out on this stuff for hours on end. I, I love, love, love talking about this stuff. I love sharing. I love sharing these stories week after week because I know that that this show, um, that EXP, is literally changing agents' financial lives, my own including. Yeah. So do me a big favor. Um, if you know somebody that might be interested in the podcast, please, please, please share it with them. If you like the podcast, please go to wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe. And as always, if you want to jump on a free call with me to strategize about your business or have questions about mine, you can always go to meetmikewall.com. And that's it for this one, folks. Thanks so much, Zach. Thanks, Mike. Yes, sir. Boom. Boom.